Hey guys, Mr. Cheeps here. Let's improve our simulation abilities. So in this video, we are going to look at some tips and tricks to improve our rigid body simulations. This video won't be as much about technical settings, more so focusing on the artistic and visual aspects of this type of rendering. Let's get started. The first thing that can help us is shape keys. Suppose you wanted to drop an extremely heavy object onto a different rigid object. Doing this, you can see that both objects obviously aren't going to bend. If I wanted to show some impact damage though, I could do it through shape keys. A shape key essentially stores an edited version of your mesh. If I go to this tab in the context menu, there is the shape key menu under the vertex groups. You can add and remove shape keys with these plus and minus buttons. If I add two shape keys and select the second one, hopping into edit mode, I can edit the mesh. Now, I may not see these changes unless I set this value slider to 1, meaning that this shape key is fully editable and it is what is displayed on screen. So if I want to show the effects of an impact, I would keep these two shape keys and have one for the base mesh and one for the deformed and damaged object. Then I would use keyframing to control when the second keyframe comes into effect by right clicking on the value slider and inserting a keyframe to save that value on each specific frame in the outliner. So if I set to this to zero before the impact happens and set it to one after the impact happens, I can quickly change from one of perfect mesh to the second one, a damaged mesh. You may need to change the collision settings under the physics tab to allow the shape key mesh to be taken into effect. I would recommend setting the shape to mesh, the source to deform, and check this deforming button. Now on the subject of impacts, those can be improved with some smoke for emphasis. I'm not going to go over how to set up a smoke simulation as those are an entire video subject on their own, and I would rather actually explain the settings than just gloss over everything. I will say this though, if you use particles as a basis for your smoke, you can have more control, and then you can just use a collision modifier on the things the smoke needs to collide with because it's doing it through particles. You may have to bake your rigid body simulation to keyframes first, but you should make sure that your simulation actually looks good before applying extra stuff like smoke, so it's not really a big deal to do that. Another tip for adding impacts to things is using a particle system. Just render all your particles as a collection and put a bunch of different rubble objects inside that collection. If you change the start and end values of your particle emission to be a couple of frames apart, then it will emit all these rubble pieces right at the same time. This works well, so long as it's not too close to the camera, given that it's only calculating one point rather than a full simulation. The center of gravity for your simulation will be based around the object's origin point, this yellow dot. So if you want a certain side of your rigid body object to be heavier than the other, you could easily do this by moving the center point of the object. Another thing, always apply the scale of your objects before making your simulations. It will make it more accurate and is just a good thing to do in general. In addition to this, keep the real-world scale and weight of your objects for more accurate and realistic behavior. If you have a really complex mesh, it will probably take a long time to run a rigid body simulation, and it might get rather glitchy trying to calculate all the collisions. A trick I use personally is to model a rough boxy shape around the complex mesh, and then use that for the simulation rather than the highly detailed one. Just use Control p to parent the detailed mesh to the simple one, and then it will follow along with the simulation. Now it's really cool to put a lot of time into your simulation so that they look great, but artistic presentation is everything. If we look at the simulations I've been putting into my earlier videos in this series, you can see that they all look pretty good, in my personal opinion at least. I've been doing some things to make these simulations more interesting, given that a lot of them are kind of simple. A high depth of field to blur the background and some interesting textures go a really long way. So do bright colors and reflections, it just depends on the style of render you're going for. At the end of the day, even a simple simulation like these can look beautiful if you present it in the right way. Having a super complex rigid body simulation is great, but it needs to be accompanied by good lighting at the very least. 
please don't bottleneck your renders with crappy lighting and horrible texturing. Those are some random and pretty quick tips for your rigid body simulations. I don't really know how to finish off this tutorial series on rigid bodies, so vote for something in this poll right here to see what I'll make next. And as a quick little side note, 82% of you guys aren't subscribed to my channel right now, so subscribe to not miss whatever tutorial I come out with next. Thank you guys for watching, and have a great day.